Only confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the Word of God. I'll never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to say, uh, along with Dodie, a good amen to all of our visitors and all these precious men from uh, the Soviet Union. And uh, we're just so glad to have all of you. I want you to, I want you to open your Bibles to Matthew 17. We're going to look at several scriptures tonight. I use this in a text when I preached about um, uh, faith, but that is not what I'm talking about tonight. Matthew 17. In verse 20, in the middle, uh, after the first couple of sentences there, if, see that word if ye have? If you see that, say amen. amen. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Now, I want to I wanna talk about the fact that we need as individuals and as a church to start believing God for supernatural things to happen. Jesus, the head of the church here, says that there is a position in faith where nothing will be impossible. I don't, I don't know how you think, but I, I really, sometimes I think I don't know anything or haven't touched anything like I should have, I am not satisfied with the supernatural power that ought to be flowing in my life. Is there anybody can give an agreement with that for yourself? God wants us. The difference between the religious world and the reality of Jesus is the supernatural. And the reason the world has gone crazy over Satanism and and the New Age movement and all of these other isms and asms and wasms and ought to be's and all of that is because there's not enough supernatural where it ought to be. God wants all of us to be clothed with the supernatural. You're not to come see somebody perform here and say, well, let's go down and see supernatural John Osteen, or Supernatural Dodie, or Supernatural Lord. No, every child of God should walk in the realm of the supernatural. God said, call unto me, Jeremiah 33, 3, and I will answer thee and show you great and mighty things which you know not. I don't know everything, do you? And God said, if you'll just call unto me, I'll answer you. And I'll show you great and mighty things that you don't know anything about. Oh, I tell you, I'm just chopping at the bit. I want to hear, I want to know what that means. I like what Jeremiah said. Ah, Lord God, you have made heaven and earth by your great power and stretched out arm. And nothing is too hard for you. I'll tell you, God can supernaturally communicate with us. God can supernaturally use us. But we have to have a desire. And we have to have the knowledge of what God wants to do. I pastored a denominational church for 19 years. I never saw a miracle. I didn't know anything about miracles. Didn't know how to believe God for miracles. Didn't believe miracles were for today. So as a result, I didn't have any miracles. Somebody said, I hope God doesn't perform miracles in our church. Don't worry, he won't. I hope nobody speaks in tongues in our church. No, don't worry, nobody will. See, but we have to, we have to desire personally. And, and these gifts can function. Now, I want to encourage you tonight because of an incident that happened not too long ago. 
In a big church like this, people come and they ask you for money. And they give you sad stories. They just make church after church. And you're so tender-hearted, you help them. And I'm not going to fuss at you for that. But, but you ought to be real careful about people who have sudden emergencies that just have to have immediate attention. No, they, they were that way last night and the night before and the night before and the night before. And they are not, they are not. It's not such an emergency that you have to do something right then. Years ago, I told Brother Bell, Curtis Bell, I said, uh, he came to me and said, oh, Brother Osteen. He said, we were holding a meeting out in, 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 in a high school in Pasadena, Texas. And he said, oh, Brother Osteen, there's a, there's a man out here. He's in terrible condition. He said he's starving to death. He doesn't have anything to eat. He doesn't have this and he doesn't have that. And I said, now, Brother Bell, just a minute, just a minute. I said, now, you're getting all excited. I said, I want to demonstrate something to you. I said, you bring him in here to me and he's going to tell me all of his troubles. And then he's going to fold his arms and stop talking and look at me as if to say, I am your problem. What are you going to do about your problem? So Brother Bell brought him in there and he told me his long story and he folded his arms. And he looked at me and said nothing. And I said nothing. And he said nothing. And I said nothing. And he said nothing. And I said nothing. And he said nothing. He said, what are you going to do about it? I said, it's not my problem, it's yours. He's just going around different places. Now somebody here, you got to be real careful about taking, I know the Bible says be given to hospitality, but that doesn't mean you're to take in every stray dog and cat that comes along. Now somebody here the other day took in a couple, oh, they're supposed to be man and wife, and they were in terrible condition, destitute, lost everything you know. But this woman was a Holy Ghost woman. She, she had compassion, and she took them into her home. In the middle of the night, the Holy Ghost woke her up and said, call the police. Go out there and get the number on that car. Go get the kind of car. Call the police. She obeyed the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. And they said, we'll be out there in an hour or two. She said, you come out now. Don't call me back and wake them up. You come out now. Because the Holy Ghost told me something. She told the police that. And the Holy Ghost got out there right away. <laughs> they checked the record before they came, and that man was wanted in several states for robbery, had a gun on him, and that woman was just a little tiny girl, uh, wasn't even married to him. Thank God for supernatural things. Amen. Compassion led her to do that, but the Holy Ghost can help us out of our troubles. I tell you, that thrills me to know that the Holy Ghost can do that. Amen. I've been praying about this church and about, you know, about the future and all of that. And, 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 and you know, things in the days ahead. And asking God certain things, you know. And, and then I just forgot all about it. Though he doesn't even know this. And I'm not going to tell you what it was. But, but anyway, I, I'm just walking along, minding my own business. Wasn't even thinking about God. And something like a wind went over me and God told me something. I tell you, it made me so happy. You say, what was it? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I mean, God spoke to me. And I want you to know it was a thrilling message. I thank God for the supernatural. For the supernatural. And God doesn't forget about what you talk to him about. But you can't put him in a corner and just say, now, come on, God, tell me. Come on, God, tell me. Come on. No, if your heart is sincere, leave it to God. God knows how to communicate with you. But we should be supernatural people. We have a supernatural language to pray in. We have the Holy Ghost. Think of the mighty gifts of the Holy Ghost. We should be praying more for the mighty 
gift of the working of miracles. We should be praying for the mighty gift of special faith. I know, I preached a long series on we can believe God for uh, His Word and stand on His Word and get miracles. But, but you know, that's not the only way. There are mighty gifts of healings where God flows through a person and they're healed instantly. That thrills me. You know, when I was a Baptist, everybody said, God bless the Baptist. You know, I was going along in my little Baptist boat floating along the stream of that, you know. You've heard me tell this story. You know, Jesus was in that boat. I, I mean, Peter and all the disciples were in the boat. Jesus came walking on the water. And Peter saw Jesus walking on the water. And he said, oh, Jesus, I like what you're doing. That's supernatural. Let me walk to you. Bid me come. The rest of the disciples said, stupid, you better sit down. You're going to drown. You better stay in the boat where it's safe. But Jesus didn't look at Peter and say, what do you mean, Peter? You, you, you are so foolish. Don't you know I'm the son of the living God? How dare you even want to do what I'm doing? That ought, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Is that what Jesus said? Jesus said, is this supernatural act, does that thrill you, Peter? Does that thrill you? I'm so glad it thrilled you. Come. Now I want you to know he walked on the water. A lot of people talk about him sinking, but he walked on the water. And you know, I was going down at my little Baptist boat and I saw in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all about these wonderful things. And I said, Jesus, I want to I want to get out of this boat. It's safe in here, but I won't get out there. But I drown. I won't get out. I want to see the supernatural. There ought to be a driving, consuming desire in us not to be uh, lazy in our faith, but to reach out for great and mighty things. I'm telling you, God wants us to have miracles. And God will use a housewife. He'll use a businessman. I haven't told this story in a long time. You know, many people know, some, some of you, some of the people might remember Casey Jones. Casey Jones was a real wonderful man. He was a house mover. Real, sort of eccentric. You know, he'd come to make a speech and, 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 and he'd say, I got my notes here. And he'd have 25 sheets of paper stapled together and he, he said these are my notes and he'd just roll them out there you know and, and everybody laughed you know he, he was just a great cut up but he was a spiritual man and he wasn't ashamed of Jesus and uh, he talked about Jesus and the men he worked with kind of thought he was you know kind of uh, hitting on two cylinders <laughs> not with a full load you know but Casey Jones knew Jesus and he knew what it was all about. And so he was a house mover. And, and so he went way out of town, way out of Beaumont there uh, to, to move a house. And when he got out there, uh, he had forgotten a chain. He had to have a chain to do what he was going to do. And so he had all his workers there. And he said, boys, I left my chain. I got to have a chain. And I don't want to go back to town. Let's pray. Oh, let's pray. Pray for a chain? I mean, you've got to be kidding. But you know, thank God for simple people who believe God for anything. And so he just stood right in the middle of them and he said, Jesus, you know that I love you. You know I didn't mean to leave my chain. I don't want to have to go all the way back to town. Jesus, I want you to send me a chain. I don't know how you're going to do it. I just need a chain, Jesus. And I know these men don't think you can do this, but I know you can and I'm asking you for a chain. And where they were standing, the highway was here and there was a road that turned to the right and down this way came a little pickup truck just as fast as all get out. 
and it turned to the right. And when it turned to the right, out of the bed of that truck, a chain came. And that chain just wound up right at the feet of Casey Jones. I'm talking about believing God for supernatural things. I'm talking about kicking your washing machine and said, I'm not calling a repairman. Work! Did you tell him about Michael when you fixed the icebox? Dodie, Dodie can fix anything. When anything goes wrong in our house, she can fix anything but me. <laughs> but anyway, she was over at Tamara's uh, and Jim's over, over at um, Victoria. And they, their ice maker had been, had been uh, stopped up for a long time. Well, Dodie, she, before she calls anybody, she gets in there and she moves and she goes and she does. And she, she has tenacity. She won't quit. And she, she got in there and she found what was wrong with that ice maker. And she found a... Uh, uh, pacifier stuck in it <laughs> somehow. Andrew's pacifier got stuck in that thing, and and Michael he's standing there watching. You know he's he's uh, four. Is that right? Four four years old. He's standing there watching. You know he's the one that says thank you, Yard. Thank you, Yard. Thank you, Yard. You know, and he's watching grand grandmother do this. You know, directly the eyes just came pouring out of there, and he said, "Praise God." <laughs> He believes in the supernatural. Amen. Amen. Well, well, you know, when we gather down here Monday night week, we, you know, we, we want to we think about these things. We want to think about the fact. The Bible says, Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, you'll cast out demons. They'll speak with their tongues. If you... You'll take up serpents. If you drink in the deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. You shall lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. In other words, he's saying there ought to be the sparkling glory of the supernatural. And we need to get into it. That's why I obeyed God this morning. I, I promised the Lord. Lord, he said, I wish you'd do that every service. I wait for the Holy Ghost. If you don't wait for the Holy Ghost, nothing happens. But I am determined. I don't care if it's on television or in the White House. I'm going to obey the Holy Ghost and I'm going to do what the Holy Ghost tells me to do. And we're going to see signs and wonders and miracles in this church. Not only in this church, but in your home and in your office. Wherever you work, you are to sparkle with the supernatural power of God. Dare to pray great prayers. Pray big prayers. God said, open your mouth wide and I'll fill it. Ask largely. God, you will not bankrupt heaven. Listen, God delights in giving you supernatural knowledge. He delights in giving you supernatural wisdom. He delights in giving you supernatural energy. It talks about, in the Amplified, the gifts of the Spirit, that supernatural energy that can flow through our lives. Wonderful. And I want to stir you up tonight not to be just a nominal Christian that's settled down and you've seen it all and you don't want to climb any more mountains, go down any more valleys, and help suffering, sighing, crying, dying humanity. This city needs supernatural help. And I'm telling you, we have the same Holy Ghost Jesus had. The same one. Over here in, uh, in Romans, Romans chapter 15, turn over there and we'll read a scripture. Romans 15, 18. Paul says, for I dare not speak of any of those things which Christ has not wrought by me. To make the Gentiles obedient. You know, we need to reach our generation. Now that doesn't, to make the Gentiles obedient does not mean 
that you're going to force people. It means that in order that he was able to reach the Gentile world and bring them to Jesus. See, to make the Gentiles obedient by massive Fifth Avenue advertising. Now we advertise. We make the, church, the, the city aware that Lakewood Church is here. Some churches have been here 50 years and nobody even knows they're here. I think it's all right to advertise. I think it's all right to get on television. I think it's all right to have billboards and let them know the way to the church. Why hide it? We got something good to give them. Amen. They don't hide hospitals. They don't hide, hide schools. Why should we hide churches? But all of that means nothing unless we have this. To make, Paul said, we made the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. Through, what are the next two words? Shout it out. Shout it out. Through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God. See, that's, that's how, how you should function. That's how you should function. Nearly every major turning point in this church had a miracle related to it. When Lisa was healed, the church was formed because we all got the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And uh, we always wanted television equipment and we didn't have any. And this is new to some of you people here. Joel started school when one year to ORU and took telecommunications. He said, when he started back, he said, Daddy, you've always taught me to follow, follow peace. And he said, I don't have any peace about going back to ORU. I want to stay here. I believe we ought to have a television ministry. Well, we didn't have any television equipment. I didn't know a camera from a cow. I didn't know anything about television. But anyway, I stood up over there in that church, and many of you heard me. I said, one day we're going to have uh, television equipment costs lots of money. It costs lots of money to buy television equipment. I said, but one day we're going to have television equipment. And I'd say that just before I preach. Anybody remember me saying that? And, uh, and so I didn't know how we were going to do it. I just made my confession and called the things that be not as though they were. And so after I did that several weeks or a month or two or three, uh, I got up to preach one Sunday morning and I, 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 I made that confession. Somebody handed me a note. This note said, I've been here three times and I need prayer for my body and nobody's prayed for me. Well, that's a miracle in itself and nobody prayed for me because we pray for the sick all the time. I said, well, where are you, brother? And way back in the farthest corner of that place that seated 4,000 people at that time, he was in the farthest area. And I said, well, just stand up. I was getting ready to preach. I said, just stand up. We'll pray for you back there. God's back there. God's everywhere. And so he started standing. He stood up. And I noticed he got some crutches and started moving out. I said, no, you don't need to come. You don't need to come. Stay there. Stay there. We'll pray for you there. Somebody lay hands on you there. He did like he was deaf. He just kept on moving out, moving out, moving out. I said, you don't have to come down here. You could get healed back there. We'll pray for you. Didn't pay any attention to me. How many of you were there that day? Now you see if I tell this right. He, he was so crippled and so in pain. He had had five or six back operations. One leg was pulled up in like this. He couldn't put it down. On the crutches, he had to go inch by inch. He was in such pain. And finally he got down there. And Jesus healed him instantly. He ran all over the church. He came back and kissed the platform. Carried his crutches. Everybody leaped to their feet like a football game. And where they were winning, shouting and praising God. And a prophecy came and said, now, if you'd have had television equipment, you could have recorded this and it would have blessed the world. And that morning, this congregation gave a million 
$250,000 in cash and pledges to start a television ministry. Give the Lord a hand clap. That's how we got this. Signs and wonders and miracles. There's never been a major threat to this church that God has not supernaturally shown me, but I'm still not satisfied. I want to see more. We're not seeing enough instant miracles. We're not seeing enough divine healing power flowing through your hands. We've got to stir ourselves up to know that we're devil defeaters. We cast out devils and we put in healing. We must have boldness to act in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I like that song, Be Bold. Thank God we ought to be bold. Paul said, I, I did it by signs and wonders, mighty signs and wonders and miracles. And we need to start yearning and praying as a corporate body for God to move supernaturally. Because God will use housewives, businessmen, young people. Uh, look in... Uh, Hebrews chapter, chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. In verse 3, what's the first word? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to His own will. That's God's plan. That's God's plan. Acts 19.11 says, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Everybody look at your hands. Say, my hands. my hands. Now look, it says God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Well, Paul's dead, but Paul didn't, didn't bring the miracles to pass. It was God in Paul. And God is in us. We must be willing to let him use our hands. And you don't have to have a special feeling. Now, I feel an anointing that comes on me like electricity, touches my body and my hands, and I see supernaturally and all of that. But you don't have to have that. You, you just have to be bold. That compassion that flows out of you toward people is God. God has power, but He is love. And when you feel compassion flowing out of you to somebody else, that's God. The Bible says Jesus was moved with compassion and healed the people. It was compassion that moved him toward the people. The compassion moved him toward the people. And when compassion flows out of you toward somebody, that's God in you reaching out, yearning to do something for them. You may think it's just a natural thought and saying, well, God bless Sister Sister Smith, God bless Sister Jones. God bless Mary. God bless Jim. I have a tender. No, no, don't miss that. See, don't miss that. That's God in you. That's God in you. Some of the greatest miracles I've ever seen, instantaneous miracles, is when I obeyed the divine flow of love. If you don't have that little book I wrote, you ought to get that. The divine flow. The divine flow. That's God. God moves in you far more than you realize. And then one other scripture I want to give. Just to, I'm just stirring you, stirring you up tonight to let you know we have a supernatural God. And listen, folks, there's a devil loose in the world and demons are loose in the world and they're supernatural and you'll never win by natural methods. Never win by natural methods. You know, our son talked about this little, I think we told you about this, this little, this little baby Parents brought it there, and he's a surgeon. And he opened this little baby up, and uh, there's something about the bowels. What do you call it, Dodie? Oh, huh? 
this twisted bowels, and the little baby's uh, uh, bowels were twisted. And, and, and if they turn black, I mean, the baby's going to die. That's all there is to it. Once they turn black, it's, it's twisted so much that it, it will not function anymore. And so, so Paul, our son, went out. He saw, he opened the little baby up, and there it was. It, uh, the bowels were just black. And, and uh, I mean, it just spelt death in the natural. So Paul went out to tell the people, you know, that, you know, that it was, looked hopeless uh, because the bowels were, were black. And, and they said, well, we, we're praying. We're praying. And Paul went back in and he said, Daddy, Mother, he said, I'm telling you, when I look back in that baby, the bowels were perfectly normal. Amen. Lift your hands and praise God. Hallelujah. So doctors can see miracles. Businessmen can see Real estate people can see miracles. Oh, thank God. I tell you, God can use you wherever you are. Believe God. We don't know everything. Do your best in the natural, but when you run to the end of your faith, reach out for supernatural faith. I'll tell you, God, I'll tell you when you call to God, He knows you've done all you can do. You say, God, I, 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 I need your help. I, I have to have your help. Turn to Acts chapter 4. This is one of my favorite scriptures. Acts chapter 4. Now, they, they were in trouble here. They needed help. This is a prayer. Most of you know. You can say it by heart. Acts chapter, they put them in jail, and they finally let them go, the disciples. And in verse 23, and being let go, they went to their own company. Thank God we're with our own company. Amen. You like to hobnob with drinkers, sniffers, snorters, shooters? Is that what you like to, are you just dying to get out of here to give us that bunch that lives for the devil? Is that, you're, you're not doing that, are you? No. You get out of here, you want to be with Christians. Amen. So when they being let go, they went to their own company and reported all the chief priests and elders had sent unto them. And they lifted up their voice with one accord. See, that's what we're going to do here uh, Monday night week. We're going to lift up our voice with one accord. And we're going to intercede for the city and for the world and for ourselves and our families. We're going to tell God we can't do it without His help. Could I have an amen? amen. We must implore God. God will God will not just work on his own. He may sometimes do that. But listen, prayer can move the hands of God. It won't hurt us to fast if you feel like fasting that day. Maybe a meal, maybe two, maybe all day if you feel like. What do you feel like? Don't be in bondage. But you see, they lifted up their voice with one accord. I'm convinced we can keep some people from dying in this congregation. Yes, yes, yes. If we'll pray more. Yes, yes. In faith, believing. Yes. I know when Brother Bell, Brother Bell had great miracles in his life. And one time he was suffering. Of course it came time to, for him to die and he went on to heaven. He wanted to die. He told me, he said, I want to die. Don't be praying for me. I want to die. I want to go to heaven. But anyway, his leg was swelled up real big. And uh, just so big and so bloody looking, you know, just all the veins broken. And so he went up, he went up to his camp way up in the country. And, and he was suffering so, so much. And, and I got him to tell this so, to me over and over again. So... I just, I wouldn't exaggerate. See, I don't want to exaggerate anything. I want to get it right. He said, Brother Osteen, I was laying up there alone in the bed. He said, I could see 
to, 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 to my little kitchen. There's a little window there, and I could see the moonlight and all of that. And he said, I was hurting so much. I was in pain. I, I just could hardly stand the pain. And I was saying, Jesus, I need a miracle. Jesus, I need a miracle. Oh, God, I need a miracle. Help me, Jesus. And he said, I don't know how to explain it to you. I don't know how to explain it. But he said, I saw the healing power of God come through that window. I saw it come straight to my leg and touch my leg. In a matter of a minute or two, the leg was completely normal. Lift your hands and praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. They lifted up their voice with one accord and said, notice what they said, Lord, you God. That's a good place to start. Lord, you God. You made heaven and earth by your, and the, and, and the sea and all that in them is. I tell you, if he did that, he can do whatever I need. Amen. You know, sometimes we get so used to pain and everything else in our body and trouble in our family. We, ju we just don't think God could heal a wart. I mean, we get to thinking that way, you know. Well, you know, I pray and God didn't do No, stir yourself up. Wrap your fingers in the garments of God and say, I'll not be shaken off. I tell you, I feel a fire burning in me. I'm telling you, the greatest days of our, of our ministry here in this church are right ahead of us. And it'll not be done by natural means. It's going to be stirring of the supernatural power of the living God. God can do more to stir this city by one mighty miracle than we can do in a hundred years. Lord, your God, you have made heaven and earth by your great power. And stretch that arm. That's what, that's what I, uh, Jeremiah said. You made the heaven and earth and the sea and all that in him that is. Who by the mouth of your servant David have said, See, you can tell God. He said a lot about your supernatural equipment. Can I have an amen? amen. You said, oh, and told all, all he said. Verse 29, and now, Lord, and now, Lord, behold their threatenings. You know, they wanted to kill them. Behold their threatenings and grant unto your servants that they may call their congressmen and their representatives and use their influence and bribe the authorities. Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto your servants that with all boldness we may speak your word. The first thing you ought to pray for is you will have boldness to speak the word. Speak a creative miracle into existence. Command the powers of darkness to go. Speak life into somebody's body. With all boldness, we may speak your word. That doesn't just mean preaching. That means with boldness, you speak. You know Jesus is going to do it. With all boldness that we may speak your word. That's our part. Then he says, by stretching forth your hand, your hand, Father, your hand, Jesus, stretch forth your hand to heal. And that signs and wonders may be done by the name of your holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed on Monday night, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and spake the word of God with boldness. Hallelujah. Jump to your feet, please.
Start praising God for the supernatural power of God. Sikabarabaka shandaya. Solo shabatataya. Oh, laboko shakabarabakataya. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Eh, koshamatasataya. Pray in tongues of our. Ilabolo lobo hoshikamama mahandaya. To shemara. To shemara. Silabolo bohotai. Kandolo mahai. Head to say. 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 Oh, glory to God. Ibo shoda. Come on, stir yourself up and pray in the Holy Ghost. Ilabolo lobo hoshamahandaya. Now let's be still, remain standing and listen to this prophecy. Yes, saith the Lord. Yes, 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 saith the Lord. This is of me. The stirring that you feel in your spirits is of me. For you see, all that I am and all that I have, I have invested in you. Release what I have placed in you. Release it through your mouth. Speak my word. Release it through your hands. Lay my hands on the captives and set them free. Stir that up. Stir that up and release it into suffering humanity. Release the captives. You are the answer. Yes. When you release my spirit yes. and my power. Yes. I have given you to yes. this generation. I have given you for this generation. Yes. to demonstrate the power of the Holy Ghost. The supernatural yes. power of the Spirit of God. Now go forth and release my spirit. Yes. Lift your hands and praise him. Oh, praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Kilo Moshokomarabakatase. Kilo Moshokomarabahaya. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now remain standing just a moment. No, you can sit down. Sit down just a minute. Willie, come up here and tell. Now, God does work supernatural. Willie was telling me about a, a miracle she received right here in this church. Just tell it briefly, just like okay. you did to me. Uh, the healing I received came from listening to what Brother Osteen teaches. The scripture he used to nod, I couldn't believe he was saying it, was Matthew 17, 20. Is exactly when I prayed at home, I said, God, I, have res I am showing severe symptoms in my body, and I want to ask you how I'm to receive my healing. And he said, speak to that mountain and command it to be cast into the sea. So about three times a day, I would say that scripture. I would speak to the sickness, command it to be cast into the sea, by 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes I am healed. And I did that about 10 days. The symptoms got worse. I came to church here one Sunday morning, and just as we had finished praise and worship, I sat down in my seat, and God spoke. And we think of the power of his word, but it was power. It came down and made the top of my head like it was void and went straight into the inside of me as he spoke, I have sent my word and healeth thee. And when I got home, the symptoms was all gone. That was several months ago, and it ha has never returned. Hey, lift your hands and praise the Lord. Lift your hands and worship God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, and you shall see signs, and you shall see wonders, for you shall stir yourself from this night forth, and you shall reach out to me, saith God, and I will reach out to you. Did not I say, draw nigh to God, and he'll draw nigh to you? As you reach out for me, I gladly come your way. When you take one step toward me, I take two toward you. I desire to use you in these last dark days. So stir yourself up. Stir yourself up and reach out and you shall walk in the miraculous. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and praise the Lord. 
Praise Him. Praise Him. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's bow our heads in prayer.